So, Dr. Randall, how are you today? I'm wonderful. How are you? I'm doing very, very well. Welcome to episode two, everyone, of the Willow podcast. Here today we have Dr. Gail Randall, who I was uh, very fortunate to meet a couple of months ago. Uh, Dr. Randall did, uh, did her uh, medical school education at the University of Nebraska, uh, internal medicine residency and fellowship at UCLA Hospitals and Clinics, an associate professor of medicine at UCLA, uh, really an incredible background, but potentially one of the most incredible facts is that uh, Dr. Randall was one of the first physicians to introduce and teach uh, con uh, complementary alternative medicine to medical school students. And I think that's, uh, that's exactly why we're on the phone today. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm going to ask a number of questions uh, on, on how you kind of discovered this and, and why it became your central theme and your central passion. Uh, but first of all, I'd love you to introduce yourself and, and what you're up to these days before we dive in. All right. Well, as you said, I'm Dr. Gail Randall, and I am currently the director of Randall Wellness, which is in Woodland Hills. But I've, it was a long journey getting there. <laughs> As you said, I started out at University of Nebraska. I was the number one um, pick. You know, we have something called the match yeah. to go to, to UCLA. They said they'd never taken anyone from Nebraska before. Wow. And so I said, oh, boy, I hope they're happy. But I think they did turn out to be happy <laughs> because they invited me on the faculty. And I became um, not only an internist, but a gastroenterologist. And I've always been interested in new and innovative things. I actually uh, helped create the first video uh, endoscopy unit. Wow. At the VA Wadsworth, yeah. So that was very exciting. I've always had a sort of a foot in both worlds. I love technology mm -hmm. and I love natural medicine, you know, yeah. in, in all time. I've studied many different disciplines of natural medicine, all the way from Native American medicine. That was my first love. Right. You know, to, um, you know, uh, acupuncture, both Chinese and Japanese, yeah. color therapy, many, many things, more than we have time to talk about right now. <laughs> <laughs> my, oh, my, yeah. See those, but it just shows my interest in many different ways to approach health. Yes. And I'm, I'm fascinated. I can never know enough. Right. You know, the more that I can know, the more I can help my my patients and I love the very very small scientific stuff all the way to the great big spiritual stuff. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, human health is a, is a complicated topic, and then you you layer on top of that the humans themselves, and you've got yourself a real concoction. So, uh, my first question to you is, you know, you've you've dedicated your life to this. The, the question is, why do you do this, and and what what outcomes do you really want to see, be they individual or be or be they mm -hmm. society? I heard a comment by one of the leaders of Greenpeace at once, and I can't remember who it was, which one it was, whether it was Patrick or anyway. And they asked him when they were ramming uh, whaling boats. Do you mm -hmm. remember that? Yeah. And they asked him, how can you do that? And he said, how can I not do that? And right. that's how I feel about medicine. That's how right. I feel about healing. Yeah. Right. That's just, it's been a it's cool my thing. purpose. It's my yeah. reason for being here this time. And I know it. So I'm very lucky to know why I'm here. Where did it all and, begin okay. for you? I mean, coming, wh wh did you grow, did you grow up in Nebraska or did you end up? In I did. Yeah. It's a great, yeah. it's a, as we say, it's a great place to be from. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. it, it was, it was lovely because in those days it was so simple and you run out and you're in the cornfield or I used yeah. to go like to, you know, go be with the horses that I could see from the tree I climbed up in my front yard. So, right. yeah, it was a lovely, lovely way to grow up. And, and where did, when did all of this really begin? When did your fascination with human health begin? Where did your fascination with healing begin? Oh, well, I think right away, I was always interested in helping people. And I was always interested in helping animals, too. As a matter of fact, when it came down to it, I had a choice of going to either um veterinary school which is really hard to get in by the way really? or um you know helping people and mm -hmm. i decided people needed help a lot more than animals and that's why i went that direction right so. no that's fascinating and and you came to uh when did you come to the los angeles area 1982, 1982. i mean not for the first time but to right. for permanent you know that's when i started my internship 
Right. And, and the, the, one of the things that we're going to discuss today is the importance of diet uh, as, it re- as it relates to human health. Mm-hmm. If you could speak very broadly about what you believe the importance is uh, of diet on human health, that would be a great way to start. Yeah. I, you know, I've always been interested in diet. I've always been interested in nutrition. As a mm-hmm. matter of fact, one of my first patients as an intern had sideroblastic anemia, which as you probably know, can, or it can turn into leukemia. Right. And he was having repeated admissions to the hospital. And, and in those days, they bounced back to you if they were your patient, they, if they right. you know, were doing in hospital work. Right. And so I, of course, learned about it. And I, I learned that in some cases, at least children, if you give them high doses of folic acid, hmm. you can reverse it. And I said, well, that's not going to hurt him, right? Yeah. So I asked my resident, he said, okay, whatever, go ahead. <laughs> and yeah. that man reversed his illness and went home. And of course, we, I did many other things. I asked him, what do you eat? Mm-hmm. You know, what are you doing at home? And what he was eating was not so good. You know, he was eating hamburgers and not enough vegetables. And he was smoking and he was drinking alcohol and he had lost his wife. And I said, do you think Rosa would want you to do that? Mm. And he says, no, I, I don't think so. And so we reversed his whole disease process by changing his diet and his lifestyle and giving him a reason to live. Yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's endless anecdotal evidence and I think mounting uh, statistical evidence. Well, that- there's some very good firm scientific evidence yes. Yes. that, you know, plant-based diet is the way to go. There's no question. Right, right. You know, early on in the 19, 2014, you know, they, there were really good studies out of Harvard that were published that showed, you know, plant, I mean, plant-based, they studied plant-based without and plant-based with meat. Mm-hmm. And when they added the meat, I mean, in one study, it was like 28% that, you know, risk for increased yeah. car- cardiovascular disease. Right, right. And yeah. I mean, it's, it's actually phenomenal, you know, and I think it's based on inflammation. We'll talk, more that about that. Talk, talk more about how and why you think that m- much, of these, much of these chronic illnesses are attributable to inflammation. Well, being a gastroenterologist, I've always been interested in the gut and I've always been interested in the microbiome. Yeah. Actually, uh, sort of with an ironic sort of twist, I was studying the microbiome at UCLA in Emron Myers Clinic. <laughs> you know, just me, you know, yeah. me and what we called Great Smokies then, which is now Genova Diagnostics. And I had all the kids <laughs> piled up against the wall. And I, I was doing poop tests on everybody. And yeah. I found out because we, that was the irritable bowel clinic. Okay. So right. I found out, hey, most of these irritable bowel patients do not need a psychiatrist. They need to balance their gut. You know, they have right. bugs that don't belong there and they have, you know, not enough of the good bacteria and things like that and their diets are terrible they're not even enough fiber and things like that mm. so i was studying and helping to define the microbiome before anybody was even thinking about it it didn't matter in those days like cuz okay i'm 68 in those days it was it's commensal meaning it belongs there it doesn't matter right. what you don't see doesn't hurt you Yes. And I'm saying, well, I don't know about that because I'm finding these things. And when I kind of tweak them and get them on the right diet, the bugs change and they get better. Right, right. And so, then that, all of this, and, and, and back to the inflammation piece, this is caused by uh, the okay. interaction of a poor diet on someone's phenotype, I assume, on their genetics? Oh, this is my favorite subject. And I, I don't even think you have to have a phenotype. You have to be human and live here on planet Earth Mm-hmm. And eat the way that, uh, you know, they started making us eat in, in 1950 mm-hmm. when junk food came out. Yeah. You know, and then everybody starts eating junk food and stops eating vegetables because it's yeah. cheap and it's fast and it tastes yeah. good, you know. And plus, you know, it ha- turns out it has you know, some really bad poisons in there, you know, not to mention just the trans fats, but all kinds of, yes. you know, herbicides, pesticides, fungicides, you know. but Back to the to the gut. Mm. The gut needs a certain amount of fiber. I don't know if we have it totally worked out, but I mean, it, you know, somewhere around sixty grams a right. day. It's a right. lot, and, but and it's not. 
mechanistically, what what does the fiber do to the gut? Because I think that, uh, for example, of course, I trust you and I, I trust the medical literature. But that gap between what the the reason why you should invest, uh, you should ingest sixty grams of fiber. What does that turn into in the human body? What happens when? Well, first of all, if you look at our predecessors, you look at our, you know, the people that lived on the land mm -hmm. before we had four square houses and all our food is microwaved, irradiated, yeah. you, know, you name it, and it has no nutrients in it. Yeah. That's what people ate. Yeah. And they did really well, you know, with yeah. being part of their environment. But yeah. what the fiber does is, you know, just in a mechanistic sense, gives you, you know, inulin and things like that. It's a prebiotic. Okay. So it, it acts so that the, pro, the probiotics, which is your microbiome, has mm -hmm. some place to live, have some place to, they don't have any way of hanging on the good bacteria, but the wow. fiber gives them a way of having a home and sort of sticking around for a longer period of time. And that really helps. And of course, it, there's more to it, but that's, mm -hmm. you know, if you don't have that and you get an imbalance, you get something called leaky gut, which of oh. course I believed in clear back when I was at UCLA in the beginning too, mm -hmm. but everybody thought I was nuts. Well, now everybody's beginning to believe in it, you know? Right, but well, you so, must be, you must be absolutely pumped to see all of the development, the technological development around all of these different, essentially data accumulation mechanisms. Oh, I'm so happy. I'm so yeah. thrilled. They're finally getting it, you know, because yeah. it's so important with right. human health. The gut is everything. There's, there's you know, one. I say all disease begins in the gut because right. when you start getting these imbalances, you know, food goes through the brush border, it's processed by the cells, released in the bloodstream, that's the way it's supposed to be. But when you have yeah. leaky gut because you have an imbalance of bad bacteria and good bacteria, maybe you don't have enough good bacteria, maybe, right. you, maybe you have too many bad bacteria, you get actual inflammation. Yeah. And when, what happens when you fall down and skin your knee? It right. gets swollen, right? Yeah. So these cells, which are supposed to be really tied together, mm -hmm. spread apart. Yes. Okay. So what's the significance of that? The food still goes through the brush butter, but it also goes right between the cells. Then it right. goes into your body and your body goes, ah, dangerous stranger in the house and starts making yes. antibodies to it, which cross reacts to your own cells. Oftentimes joints, you get arthritis, you get rashes. And if you do it long enough, you get autoimmune disease. Incredible. So it, it really is from your perspective, the, the catalyst of all of not necessarily all, but many, many chronic illnesses that plague the United States today. I would say pretty close to almost all, except wow. accidents or something like that or neurolog but even neurologic problems can be inflammatory. Yes. Well you know? there are there are two there are two facts about the gut that I find absolutely incredible. The first one is that per cell count, we are about ten times more gut bacteria than we are human cells. We have, you know, we have a, 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 an almost an order of magnitude more. And, and people on the planet. Yes. <laughs> it's, in, it's crazy. And the, and the second yeah. one is that the gut was the first brain. The gut has neurons. And it was the, it was the first uh, neurological structure to develop before the second exactly. brain with the capacity. And it's still the brain. It's still yes. the brain. More, more neurotransmitters, which actually determine how we feel. If we're happy, are we sad? Yes. You know, how do we feel? Yes. You know, when you look at your pooled neurotransmitters throughout your body, your gut has the most. Are you serious? No, it has like 70% of the neurotransmitters come from your gut. Of so it, when you say you have a gut feeling, you have <laughs> a gut feeling, you know, it's really coming from there. It also has your immune system. All, you know, we're, humans are the only one that are born, we're born with a thymus, right? That's okay. where your T cells come from. We've right. heard about T cells. We've heard about that with HIV and all that. But it's mm -hmm. T cells do more than HIV, fight HIV. Any any fungus, any virus, any anything that T cells fight, okay, yes. they come from your gut because all the T cells from your thymus, when you're uh, about two, when you're a little toddler, move out and move into your gut and set up these little change these these colonies called Peyer's patches mm -hmm. so again about 70 percent of your immunity comes from your gut so when your gut is out of balance i always say when the when the gut goes your immunity blows you so, know, so okay. if somebody gets dysentery or clostidium dis difficile 
-hmm. or some really bad thing, it's gonna you're or even really bad stress. Right. Your immunity is gonna take a dive. Right. And that's how we get cancer. That's how we get, you know, other bad things. You know. Right. And and if if anyone listening to this or otherwise wants to understand how to have how to achieve that balanced gut, what are those steps that we take? I presume it starts with food. Well, it's, of course. First of all, you take out the bad things. Mm -hmm. So you take out the junk food. You take out the herbicides, pesticides, fungicides. You know, you and and in order to do that, you have to know where are what, what foods are those in. Yes. So is organic food good? Well, it's better than non-organic food, but it's it's still they still allow them to put some of those chemicals on the food. Yes. So it's not the all in all. You know. Yes. So forty-eight percent of all pesticides are approved for organic use in California. I mean, it's a significant that's crazy, you know. It but uh, you know, whatever. So that's what it is. We have to deal with it. We we mm -hmm. have a situation, and we have to deal with it. So we need to get food that's mm -hmm. that's herbicide, pesticide, fun, fungicide free. Yes, it's Monsanto free. You know, mm -hmm. yeah. and then we can talk about real health. You know, because yeah. if you take out the bad things, I don't care how many detoxes you do, if mm. you're constantly putting it in, you're going to have it in your body. Right. And again, that's back to cancer, you know, and other autoimmune diseases and things like that get triggered by those right. chemicals. And right. not to mention sexual disorders, neurologic disorders, things like mm. that. Yeah. So we got to get the bad things out and then we yeah. got to put the good things in, which is the fiber the antioxidants from the good plant-based food, the, the minerals, mm -hmm. and you know the amino acids. Because everybody mm -hmm. says, how am I going to get my protein? You know, if I just eat plants. Yeah. Well, a lot of plants have a lot of protein, but there's plenty of protein in many kinds of legumes yes. and beans and seeds and things like that. It's about the amino acids. Yes. So the very famous guy, I won't mention, who says you got to eat meat, to make meat, it's simply not true. No, I mean, this is, look at, the, I think, I think, I believe that the 10 largest animals on earth are all herbivorous. And, right. you know, and I'm a big horse fan, so <laughs> 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 never saw him eat meat in his entire life. But right, and, and that's, and, and animals, animals are aggregators of what they are consuming from the land, what they're consuming mm -hmm. from the earth. The, these animals aren't necessarily generating any new vitamins or minerals. Right, they aggregate them. and look at a silverback gorilla someday. You know, they have more muscle than any of those bodybuilders. Yes. You know, but it's all amino acids. It's secrets in the amino acids. And that's easy to do with plants if you right. know what you're doing. And yes. You have the right. That's right. And that's very important to understand what you're doing. For example, B12 can very easily be overlooked. That's actually when I started my journey down that path for about nine or 10 months. Uh, I didn't supplement B12 at all, at all. Mm, and mm. I started to, I started to see the neurological issues, honestly. And I've, I've never had wow. any kind of anxiety or depression. Did you get or numb feet or? It's, it was fascinating. So there was, there were, there was a little bit of tingling. Um, there was, there were some weird sensations in the feet. One of the, the main issues were neurological. I was on a plane ride over to Florida right. and I'm, I'm 23 at the time on a plane run over to Florida. And I, I have a panic attack on the plane on a red eye. I've never had panic, anxiety, anything like that. Wow. And for, for days and days and days, every time I'm trying to go to sleep, bang, it's like that falling off the cliff, wake up and. Oh, wow. So it was, it was, it was intense and it was a, a very sincere, uh, a very severe, I would suppose, I suppose reaction to the fact that I hadn't been supplementing B12. So mm -hmm. part of all of this is, doing it correctly. We do, I, I do want people to eat a whole food plant-based diet for purposes of their health. But at the same time, uh, you, must be, you must be careful and you must understand what happens when you don't do it right. And that's, I yeah, think. Yeah, B12 and folic acid. I, at least, you know, I was lucky because I'm a physician and I have been for a number of years. So <laughs> I knew I had to take B12. That's right. That's right. Well, you, you managed to dodge all of those issues, issues as well. One of the one of the most intriguing things for me uh, and saddening is that as a society, we are the most educated we've ever been. We have access to the most information we've ever had. Uh, and we're living longer than we ever had before. But the state of health around the world, 2.2 billion people micronutrient deficient, 821 yeah. million people not having access to food. 
I think, I believe very, very strongly, it is the number one issue we face today. Right. The fact that we eat the wrong food and almost half of the world's population is unwell because of it. I'm interested in your perspective on that, especially the micronutrient deficiency that... Right. Well, I think some of it is ignorance. Mm -hmm. I think some of it is ignorance in the the more well-educated people that have, you know, a fair amount of income. Yes. And some of it is because, you know, in poor nations and things like that, they just don't have a choice. Of course. Yeah. But, you know, the, we got to get the education to the people and teach them. And that also it's just the matter of convenience, you know, fast food, going, just getting it and, you know, what the hell won't hurt me a little bit and does. I mean, that's been shown. It does hurt you. Yeah. That, that, that appears to be absolutely clear that the, the i mean i'm sure you watch game changers you know i mean the people in you know even athletes can yes. feel it they increase their performance mm-hmm. you know by a huge amount changing yes. through a vegan diet and they you know they at first they were all skeptical and things like that because they're used to pounding the meat and then they're like cool. i don't want to go back this is yeah. amazing i've never felt better well i think and for me obviously I don't want to be militant about it and I won't be militant about it. I think that the one line that drives it home better than anything else is that the closer that you get to a whole food plant-based diet, the closer you will get to optimal health. It's not, no, I agree. You know, a lot of people just aren't ready. They're not ready, you know, and yeah. even Mark Hyman, he advocates eating fish and some meat and whatnot. And mm-hmm. I go, you know, like, fine. You know, do what you can do, but yes. let's move in that direction. Yes. Because I think eventually people will see the benefit and get it. But we, yes. if we can get them to, I mean, no, if you're going to eat meat from regenerative farming and things like yeah. that, of course, it's a lot better yes. than, the, than regular industrial meat, which is poison. Yes. You know, but, um, do you, you know, so, so it's going to be a gradual change, but if it's available, and people do it and they start to feel the benefits in their body and see the benefits, mm. they'll change. Yeah, I mean, I saw, but, and this is, the, this is the confusing part for me is because it, the, the data appears obvious. And I'm really trying to break these hypotheses, but a, a couple of facts. So the Milken Institute did a study. Diet-related disease costs the United States $1.7 trillion a year. That's almost 10% of the United States GDP. Huge, huge. Because of diet-related disease. You've got heart disease killing 640,000 people last year. You've got Mm -hmm. rampant diabetes. You've got rampant obesity. And Mm -hmm. what the studies all appear to show, without without the emotion, what the studies appear to show is that the closer you get to a whole food plant-based diet, the healthier you get. So I think it comes back to the same point as you said. It's all about the it's all about the education, and what we're trying to do at Willow is attach that education to a real product, to one yeah. of those products that we're talking about. Not only are we going to provide you the pesticide-free product, zero heavy, zero, zero heavy metals, uh, completely local production, year-round production, zero seasonality. At the same time, we're going to attach the fact that hey, look, this this kale that you're consuming, this this mizuna you're consuming, this brassica is very, very good for hypertension. If you have mm-hmm, hypertension, mm-hmm. you should be consuming this product more regularly to try and decrease that uh, that that illness that you have. Um, and that's that's what's so exciting for me. And that's why we crossed paths in, paths in the first place. I'm interested if you have perspectives on that. Yeah, exactly. And even athletes, athletes can see, you know, if you tell them, look, there's all these amino acids in these products, mm-hmm. you know, and you compare it to say a hamburger or something, there and then they you know we have them learn you know the education i'd like to have everybody watch game changers i think it should be 101 for this but yes it's uh, you know it's going to change the world yes i really i really that's uh, so my brother the, my co- uh, the co-founder of, of willow uh the cto of the organization um that's one of the things we asked ourselves what what is something that you believe is true that 90 percent of people disagree with what is the hidden truth that society as a whole does not yet know, but will know soon? And what, do, what are we doing now that we will look back in 30, 40 years time and go, what on earth were what we, we thinking? thinking? And this is, I think this is number one. This is yeah. number one. We know this what the, 
I I love things like that. I mean, I've always been yes. into that. You know, I was into the microbiome before it existed. You yeah. know, I was into alternative medicine before it existed, mm -hmm. and then I got and now now it's so ludicrous to me that I'm actually board certified in, in, <laughs> in integrative medicine. You know, when they thought I was a you know quack and everything because of it. But yeah, yeah. Well, no, and congratulations to you, and and hopefully we can spearhead a couple of those movements here in the beginning of the 21st century. Um, I'm interested to know from your perspective, now that we're starting to see technologies outside of our own at Willow, we're starting to see technologies integrate into uh, the human lifestyle and start to deduce things, transduce things about the human being, um, genetically, metabolically, uh, with the microbiome. What role do you think personalized uh, personalized nutrition or precision nutrition plays in the future of healthcare? I think it's huge. I think it's really huge. I mean, people want to know now. I mean, I probably spend more than 80% of my time, maybe 90% talking about food to mm -hmm. people. Yeah. yeah. So I would just love to be able to say, look, I have this food prescription plan for you. Right. And this is going to give you exactly what you need. I don't need to give you 49 supplements, you know, or because right now, I mean, I truly, I really believe in supplements, but if yes. we can do it with food, oh my goodness, that is the ideal thing. Food yes. first. I mean, we, we, we talk about this in functional medicine for years, food first. But That's if bad. we can really make it happen, it's, it's a done deal. No. Well, that's, I think that's a perfect way to round out, Dr. Randall. I think that we are going to make it happen and it's going to start in the Bay Area and then it's going to move to Southern California and then it's just going to explode over, all over the rest of the world. So uh, with that, I really do want to thank you for this podcast and for your involvement with 1.1 1, uh, 1 .1 and Willow. And uh, I, I really see uh, the, the collaborative efforts that we're starting to embark upon having huge impact on society. So I want to thank you very much. I can't tell you how excited I am, Sam. Oh, well, me too. It's reciprocated. Thank you very much, Dr. Randall. Have a, okay. have a wonderful day.